I'd like to give a big shout out to the Bureau of Market Research. Um, Antoinette and Marcel, we, ha we had some early meetings talking about Family Watch joining this summit and co-sponsoring it. And I've seen the tireless efforts and work that they have put into this. And same with the entire ICOSI and NICOSI team. A lot of work has gone into this. I've been here for two days listening to many of you and learning from many of you, and it's been a, a great honor for our team to be here and for Family Watch to co-sponsor this. Um, I'm going to bring some troubling information, but that's nothing new to this cause. Many of you have dedicated your life to protecting children who've been abused, experienced trauma, have been trafficked, have experienced all sorts of things. Today I'm going to talk about some institutionalized sexualization of children and the assault on them. So I want you to fasten your seatbelts because we're going to go through a lot of information really quickly. I'm going to start with a few questions. What kind of organization seeks to legalize prostitution and promote it as a right to children as young as age 10. Here's a hint. Here's their toolkit. This is a slide from their toolkit for children under the age of 10. Sexual activity may be part of different types of relationships, including dating, marriage, or commercial sex work, equating prostitution with marriage and dating and other relationships. What kind of an organization encourages teens to experiment with BDSM, that's bondage, discipline, sadism, and masochism, just as long as it is consensual? This is a screen from an expose video done by Live Action, where a Planned Parented counselor is counseling an undercover person trying to ever undercover their agenda, pretending to be age 15. And this is what the counselor tells this 15-year-old. Sexual exploration is normal. Some whipping, some asphyxiation, tying up, take control of me. You can gag them, whip them. There are so many different fetishes out there. And it can be really fun, you know, and more. What kind of an organization would ever tell, would ever tell youth that they are infected with the deadly HIV virus and that they don't have to tell their sexual partners they're infected with HIV? <clears throat> What kind of organization promotes sexual rights and sexual pleasure for children, no matter what age? What kind of organization would tend tell 10-year-olds that it's perfectly normal to engage in these kind of behaviors that are depicted in cartoons for children? What kind of an organization would tell teens that they can have sex their own way? And I apologize for the graphic nature of some of these slides that are meant for youth, children, and teens. Different sexual positions, different activities that children, teenagers can engage in with no problem. What kind of an organization would advertise condoms in such a graphic manner as depicted here? Who is RFSU? Have you ever heard of them? They are the Swedish Member Association of International Planned Parenthood Federation. Interesting, I learned a lot about them when we started researching this organization. RFSU was founded in 1933, and it was one of the founders of International Planned Parenthood Federation in 1956, and it's still an active associ associated member. And it is, it's funded by the government of Sweden. And here is one of their early documents that helps us understand their agenda a little bit more. It's called Sex is Politics, and it's a traffic, tracking of financial resources for something called sexual and reproductive health and rights within the Swedish Development Assistance. And it's going to teach us what this Trojan umbrella term means, sexual and reproductive health and rights. And this is the term and the banner under which many of the assaults of children come. And it says, what is sexual and reproductive health and rights? It's the right to decide over one's body and sexuality, to decide freely whom you want to have sex with, irrespective of age. Elimination of harmful social practices such as social control of young people's and women's bodies and sexuality. 
Now, there are many deceptive terms that are used as part of the sexual and reproductive health agenda, and all of our speakers from Family Watch today are going to be touching on different aspects of that. But as you can guess, the organization we've been talking about since the beginning is International Planned Parenthood Federation, also known as IPPF. Parents beware. This is the biggest threat to children and families worldwide, and I'll show you why. First of all, they partner with United Nations agencies, which are also launching this war on the health and innocence of children under the SRHR agenda, and I'm going to show you how that is. You see, they have an agenda to capture the hearts and minds of our children because they know if they can raise up our children in their radical gender and sexual ideologies, they will have the future families. They will have the future leaders of nations and teachers. They will have our society. And the number one tool they are using under the sexual and reproductive health and rights agenda is something called comprehensive sexuality education, which would be better named comprehensive sexualization education, as you will see. Now, this is a little bit personal for me. This is my family. And as you notice, we have some African children that we adopted from Mozambique. Luis, Amelia, and Afonso. And it took many years for us to adopt these children, so I was going back and forth to, to Mozambique, passing through South Africa many times for six years. And during that time, on one of my trips, Amelia, who was nine years old, came home from school with a little pamphlet in her backpack. And it had the most graphic pictures in, of, of p adults engaging in anal sex that I've ever seen. I was shocked. I thought, who would put this in my daughter's backpack? And it was all given to her under the guise of helping her learn how to have safe sex, if you can imagine. This was my first entry into the comprehensive sexuality education agenda, and I was appalled. We're going to learn what this agenda is, and we're going to learn that Planned Parenthood is partnering with multiple, multiple UN agencies, including the World Health Organization, the organization that's supposed to set the health standards for the whole world, and they have defined sexuality, which is the key component of comprehensive sexuality education to encompass gender identities, pleasures, desires, fantasies, eroticism, sexual orientation, and more. So you can imagine if the education is going to be comprehensive about sexuality, it's going to contain a lot of information about all these topics. And the World Health Organization created the sexuality education standards for European children, saying that children as young as zero to four should learn about pleasure. We're talking about sexual pleasure and masturbation gender identities. At nine, they're to learn about pleasure, masturbation, orgasm. Now, I just want you to imagine a trauma, a, a child that's been sexually abused in a classroom where if a teacher started to engage in this kind of topic and the trauma that that might lead to. They want children to have a positive attitude towards sexuality and pleasure, sexual pleasure. This is grooming children for sex. Not only that, the World Health Organization is actually sending nine-year-olds to learn about their sexual rights to International Planned Parenthood Federation, as depicted in this slide. And there, and the footnote is, they want them to go to Planned Parenthood's Sexual Rights Declaration. Here it is in a publication called Exclaim. It says, Young People's Guide to Sexual Rights and IPPF Declaration. And in this declaration, it actually says that young people are entitled to sexual pleasure, and Planned Parenthood uh, defines young people as starting at age 10. And how to experience different forms of sexual pleasure is important to their health and well-being. They are not having sexual health unless they are experiencing sexual pleasure. Here's their pocket guide, which states that the right to personal autonomy and recognition before the law includes all persons. Now, when they say all persons, that's because they mean all children have the right to sexual freedom, to seek to experience their full sexual potential and pleasure. Now, this is the manual that really hit me personally in a big way because the children we adopted, Luis Amelia and Afonso, their parents died of AIDS. 
and I cared for their brother during some of the last stages of his AIDS. I would go back and forth from the US and Mozambique. And this is a horrible disease. Many of you may have friends or may know people who have had this. And for the United Nations to send children, the World Health Organization, to send children to International Planned Parenthood Federation that's gonna tell them that they don't have to tell their sexual partners they're infected with the HIV virus, that they have sexual rights if they're infected with HIV and rights to sexual pleasure, and they can get different forms of sexual pleasure through licking, tickling, sucking, cuddling, just have fun and explore. This is unconscionable. It actually says that these laws violate the rights of people if they have to tell their sexual partners they're infected. UNICEF. UNICEF is charged with protecting the world's children. Yet they are involved in this agenda through the distortion of children's rights. You know, many times I hear people say, I'm for children's rights. What does that mean? We need to understand that there's two kinds of children's rights. There's protection rights. These are the legitimate rights for children, the rights that we should all agree on, the right to clean water, food, health, shelter, health care, education, safety, medicine, and so forth. But then there's what are called autonomous rights. These are adult rights that they're trying to foist on children. Privacy, confidentiality, from who? From their parents. Association, right to control their bodies and sexual expression, gender identity, and sexual orientation. Now. UNICEF supports this publication along with multiple UN agencies. It's called My Body is My Body. My Life is My Life. And I can tell you this is right out of the Planned Parenthood manuals and they're helping write the UN manuals now. But notice the subtitle is Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights for Young People. This happens to be for Asia and the Pacific. And it's starting for, with children as young as age 10. And it says, sexting gives a definition of sexting, is sending, receiving, or sharing of sexually explicit texts, messages, photos, and videos. Thank you, is UNICEF gonna tell children that this is bad? It continues. Sexting may be used to seek positive feedback on body image from peers, and therefore help to improve self-esteem and sense of identity, sexting. Sexting also has the potential to be beneficial as a way of sustaining intimate relationships, to demonstrate love, trust, and commitment. For many young people, sexting may be the first expression of their sexuality, and this is particularly true for the young people with diverse sexual orientation and gender identity expression, who, for them, sexting may allow private exploration of sexuality and intimacy. This is Grooming 101. UNICEF, look at the logos, UNFPA, UNESCO, UNAIDS. Now this is the first comprehensive sexuality education type publication I found. It was brought to me by a diplomat who was on the delegation from Mexico. This is a Mexican manual and it actually was copyrighted in 1999, so it's the earliest manual we have. But it actually has a section here called Situations in Which You Could Obtain Sexual Pleasure. This is in Spanish, so it's gonna be hard unless you know Spanish, but here's the English translation. You can get it through masturbation, through all sorts of other sexual behaviors, but it also says you can get sexual pleasure through a sexual response that is directed towards inanimate objects, animals, minors, and non-consenting persons. This is UNICEF. Can you see why I speak out against comprehensive sexuality education ever since I saw this publication? Here is a manual published by UNICEF with the government of Namibia. My future, my future, my future is my choice. It's all about choice. It was developed by the Ministry of Education in Namibia and by UNICEF. Here, it teaches children there's different levels of danger of sex. You can have high danger, it's vaginal sex without a condom or anal sex, but it's low danger if you have it with a condom 
or oral sex or deep kissing or thighs and gives all sorts of descriptions or mutual masturbation, even putting that idea in the heads of these children. It says, it asks children to role play in their first language the new skills they learn, negotiating safe sex. Are ch should children be having sex? Should they be negotiating sex, any kind of sex, let alone is there in, 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 even such a thing as safe sex for children? Young people need to practice how to negotiate condom use with their partner. What is reproductive health? Well, reproductive health means you're having a satisfying sex life. That's what the children need to learn, and you're having safe sex. And the way you can have that safe sex is through touching, caressing, kissing, fondling breasts and sexual organs, licking, sucking body parts. Notice a similar theme to other materials. Masturbation is normal. It's a, the safest form of safe sex. You can give yourself pleasure, and here's how you do it. All of these programs are obsessed with sexual pleasure. Here is an activity where girls are asked to assist boys with putting on condoms. They're supposed to be doing it as a couple. It says the boy holds the wooden penis in the correct position, and the girl is required to put the condom on the penis correctly and then remove it and tie it. Can you protect yourself from STDs? Well, yes, all you have to do is use these condoms correctly, not giving them the full information. The children do not use condoms correctly and consistently, and so they have a much higher rate of STDs and pregnancy. Planned Parenthood in Zambia. They receive funds from UNICEF and RFSU. We learned about the Swedish Member Association of, Plan, uh, of um, IPPF and the Japanese Member Association of IPPF. And here you see RFSU's logo in this Zambia Planned Parenthood um, building there. And it says they have five main fields of activity. And this would be the same, I would imagine, in all African countries. SRH services, and adolescents and young people, and abortion. And they have manipulated many of the frameworks for sexuality education for governments, including this one in Zambia. Here it shows all the UN agencies, all these foreign entities, along with Planned Parenthood, are helping to create all these frameworks and, and a curriculum. And that's how this kind of thing gets into the curriculum or the framework. Describe self-body exploration, describe erection, ejaculation, describe sexual feelings. What business does a teacher have asking a child to describe their sexual feelings to them? For what purpose? Describe sexual orientation and gender identity. Know that you can have sex with the same sex gender or both sexes, and your gender identity is how you feel about your gender. Explain human rights related to sexuality, and by the way, you can learn more about this if you go visit who? Planned Parenthood. And thus we see the crux of the goal of the comprehensive sexuality education agenda. It's to get the children into the Planned Parenthood clinics so they can receive their sexual and reproductive health services. This is another program in Zambia, and they try to desensitize children to sexual things. For this activity, children are to draw different parts of, and of changes in the body during puberty on these naked models that are cartoons. People decide, who decide to have sex should be using condoms correctly. That's fourth grade. Why should they be learning about that? James and Gertrude love each other. They want to enjoy their sexual lives. If men do have sexual intercourse with each other, it describes how that is done in graphic detail here to young children. Then it redefines abstinence. It says abstinence is people who decide to abstain can enjoy safe sexual activities. You're abstaining, but you're enjoying, you're enjoying safe sexual activities. As long as you don't get vaginal fluids, semen, blood, or discharges, you can engage in everything, any possible sexual activity, and they give you all sorts of ideas. And here, if you get pregnant, it doesn't matter because a young woman who really wants to have abortion, people can give her money for a safe abortion, and this might save her life. The father of the baby, everybody can help. You can put your funds all together and, and buy her an abortion, no problem. Then we have the International Technical Guidance on Sexuality Education. This is the interagency model for all nations. 
and it redefines abstinence. You see, he who captures the language captures the power, captures the, the control. So abstinence is not just abstaining from sex now, it's also deciding when to start having sex and with whom. Did you know that? Children are to learn about sexual activity being respected, that each person's decision to be sexually active, promiscuity should be respected. They're to learn about sexual pleasure. And the most insidious thing about these many programs that we have studied is that they ask children to differentiate between the values that they hold and that their parents hold regarding sexuality. They actually methodically, step by step, we don't have time to go through how they do that, separate children from their parents' values. And we have all these UN agencies behind this. How could this be happening? I thought the United Nations was this noble institution. They do a lot of good. Many people work for the United Nations, these entities, and, and they're not bad people. But the problem is, these entities have been captured by the donor countries. And instead of thinking them, of them as UN agencies, you should think of them as NGOs of the Western governments that are funding them, because that's what's happened, and they've corrupted their agendas. In fact, here you see RFSU is bragging about helping to write, the, remember that's the Swedish member association of IPPF, helping to write the international technical guidance on sexuality education. Planned Parenthood personnel are writing all the manuals for the UN on these issues. UNFPA, my body is my own. That's what they're teaching children, and I can do whatever I want sexually or otherwise. In fact, UNFPA sponsored a youth global event called the Bali Youth Conference in Indonesia, and they came out with this big declaration. Of course, it was co-sponsored by who? IPPF. And uh, it was a review of a UN document called the International Conference on Population and Development. And the children came out with this declaration that's supposed to represent all the children of the world. This is what all the children of the world want. They want governments to know that religious barriers such as parental consent should never prevent access to safe and legal abortion. Recognizing that young people have autonomy over their own bodies, pleasures, and desires. Young people, that's 10, starting at age 10. And that children have a right to this rights-based comprehensive sexuality education and that this must include information on sexual orientation and gender identities. I'm missing the slide that also says that the youth of the world want to decriminalize, they want governments to decriminalize prostitution. Now, UNESCO is involved in this agenda and they are very manipulative about how they do it. I can't tell you how many articles I've read that are published in local newspapers across Africa by at the bidding of UN agencies and IPPF, where they try to scare your governments about the high pregnancy rates and the STDs. It's the same pattern in all the articles. Then they propose CSC as a magic solution. Then they'll hold a stakeholders meeting, and they'll say, okay, we want everybody to come together so we can discuss these wonderful CSC programs, and they invite comment and dialogue. UNESCO has done that. Then they handpick and groom young teachers, youth, religious, they'll even hire them to come to these meetings and advocate for CSE. They'll show the religious leaders and the parents non-controversial parts of the CSE curriculum to quell any concerns. And then they'll claim everybody wants CSE. It's the magic solution to all world problems. It'll prevent gender-based violence and, and so forth and so on. So this agenda, this strategy was used in South Africa. And um, Errol Naidu, who we'll hear from next, participated in one of these so-called stakeholders consultations on the sexuality education um, uh, being proposed by the education department here. Um, and he wrote this article, Errol Naidu, UNESCO guides and controls the Department of Education narrative on CSE in South Africa. He said the South African Minister of Basic Education claimed that the DBE developed CSE by the, on their own. Yet UNESCO is controlling the implementation of CSE in South Africa's public schools. He said, for example, the invitation I received to participate in the religious, religious leaders meeting on CSE in Pretoria, the invitation was signed by who? The DBA? No, UNESCO. 
Why is the United Nations agents funding, providing guidelines for, and controlling the public relations of the implementation of CSC in South Africa? Good question. Here's the concept note for that stakeholders meeting. It's going to be one week of dialogues, and we'll have traditional leaders, teachers unions, civil society, parents organizations. But then they said, this is because the South African government was already receiving a barrage of opposition and protest. And they said that was based on misinformation because of lack of adequate information and fear that people had about comprehensive sexuality education. So they had this meeting. And around that same time, they were hiring champions to promote CSE. The UN was hiring champions, not your government. And they presented on this new international guidance on sexuality education. Well, Errol Naidu went there, and he witnessed that the religious voice was shut down, and they ignored him. They made fun of him. And yet they claimed this is a victory, and everybody wants this education. So I'm going to skip through to UNFPA. This is my last example on comprehensive sexuality education. I want you to notice all the logos on here. It's hard to see because they're a little bit blurry, but I'll tell you there's UNICEF, there's Sweden, there's a European Commission, there's uh, Switzerland, there's the UK, all backing this comprehensive sexuality education manual for out-of-school youth in Zimbabwe. It's all about protecting the children's sexual and reproductive health starting at age 10 and lumping 10-year-olds with up to 20-year-olds. Trying to desensitize the children to sexual things. They put signs on the walls, male sexual organs, female sexual organs, and they tell the kids, brainstorm every word you know, every sexual slang word, every scientific word, every child's word, and let's just get all this sexual stuff up on the board, desensitizing them. Then, if you can imagine... They ask children to study the sexual patterns, like masturbation, sodomy, voyeurism, exhibitionism, gerontal sexuality, pederasty, bestiality, necrophilia, sexual pleasure from corpses, urophilia, sexual pleasure from urine, and so on and so forth. Can you imagine asking children to study this and then report on two of the ones that they like to report on? Okay. Then they have them engage in different... Um, role plays where they're, they're actually seducing each other under the guise of consent education. That's what consent education. And then they discuss all the sexual fluids that are happening in the girls' and the boys' body as they get excited in these role plays. Last, UN Women. UN Women has allocated 500, I'm sorry, the, the European Union has allocated 500 euros towards an, a gender-based violence prevention program that's supposed to go throughout Africa and the Caribbean. And do you know what their manual written by UN women to, to prevent gender-based violence, do you know what it is? It's a comprehensive sexuality education manual. They're using the gender-based violence banner to push this agenda. It's all a guise, okay? We don't have time to go through it, but I'm happy to send you all these slides. I have to come to a close. This seems like a 1,200-headed monster, you know, that, I mean, this is powerful. The Western governments, the European Union, U.S. behind it, Canada, the U.N. agencies. This is big, but there's lots of good news. First of all, the good news is that you are here. And you now understand this agenda, if you didn't already. But there's also good news is we have powerful information that we'll be disseminating throughout the day that refutes all the claims. I mean, they're all false. Comprehensive sexuality education has been proven to be a failure, a dismal failure. It does not prevent STDs as claimed. It does not prevent pregnancy. And there's ironclad data that you can find that we'll give you. We even have some copies here. 89% failure in Africa, and it even increased sexual risk-taking by 24%. And the author of this study said, CSE has not been an effective public health strategy in the classrooms. The other good news is people are standing up and protesting and stopping these programs all across Africa. You're going to learn from some of our Family Watch team members all about that and how you can get involved. 
And we have powerful tools we're gonna be equipping you with throughout the rest of the day, including this video that you can use that exposes many of the things that I've talked to you today. It's in multiple languages. I think we even had it recently um, translated into Swahili. Um, but you can go to stopcse.org and find this documentary. But I'm gonna end with where I started. It's about the children. It's a war over the hearts and minds of our children because they know that as, the fam as children go, so goes the family, so goes the nation, so goes the world. We invite you to join us in exposing this agenda because as he said regarding this quote on our website, together, all of us, we can and we will protect the health and innocence of Africa's children, of South Africa's children, and of the world. Thank you.